Today we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. My idea for this show was to invite guests and get the conversation started, to take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. And we encourage our listeners to look within themselves to take decisive action to make a positive difference. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers, and we are still in our Black History Month series. And this week, uh, I am pleased to have with me my special guest, Mr. Gerald Harkness. And uh, today's theme is Blacks Who Are True First with producer Gerald Harkness. Brother Bill. Hey, how you doing, man? The Renaissance, man. It's a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on. You got it. You got it. So, 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 I'm, so our description today is Blacks in America hmm. have made significant historic contributions, most of which were not included in the history books. Yeah. Now, Gerald, yeah. my buddy, produced a documentary series uh, on television entitled True First, which focuses on these stories of Blacks who were indeed trailblazers and history makers. All right, Gerald, welcome aboard, my brother. Thanks, brother. I almost, I almost spoke over you, man. It's your show, my brother. I'm, I'm following your lead. My, my apologies, but thanks for the, uh, thanks for the props with, uh, with True First, man. I appreciate it. Oh, you got it, man. No problem. No problem. It was a, it is a wonderful uh, piece, by the way, and I recommend everybody check it out because uh, it is of great value and importance because it does tell us a lot of information that wasn't included in our history books. So um, yeah, yeah, and you know what? You know what's crazy about that bill is you know it's it's still segregated, man. I was thinking about this before coming on the show. It's still uh -huh. American history, mainstream history, white history. And then in February, there's Black History Month. And there's there's still that feeling that there's there's one history, um, which is mainstream history. And then you got 28 days to talk about what, what these people of color did. It's it's still not inclusive, which which still blows me away, man. It, it that, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, that's the dynamic we're in right now, and it's cool, but um, shocking that it's still not an integrated, um, inclusive history that we're taught and that we're fed, and yeah. just odd. Yeah, no, you you are you are definitely on the case, um, and I would concur with all of that. And I was on a call, a Zoom call just last night with. Um, the uh, Hudson Valley Environmental Group, and they had a featured guest, which was a uh, uh, indigenous individual. Who, man, if you think the story of blacks in American history is bad, <laughs> <laughs> there's another one, man. So we're, yeah. we're definitely not alone on this. Um, no, and no, I not. hope that we can get to a point of being able to bring that stuff together because. It fills in a lot of blanks. It fills in a lot of holes. And and uh, as we had sort of touched on before, because when, when you were my guest uh, previous to this, is that there is something significant that happens when you omit Black history. There are two uh, very devastating pieces to it um, as it relates to the disservice that is done for, first of all, American culture. Sure. Uh, you know, at large, it, it's it's terrible because uh, from the perspective of the history as it's taught and written and, and perpetuated in the American school system, it would lead you to believe that there were only, you know, like two or three Blacks of any real significance who really did anything. No. Now, as, so as that relates to, uh, you know, being able to contribute to a psyche yeah. and a mindset that perhaps uh, from a white perspective may look at Blacks as not being quite as smart, quite as accomplished, quite as worthy of praise or, or, or what have you, any way you look at that. Yeah. But it also <clears throat> has a very devastating effect also on Black people because they too 
start to and and it's easily and can be can they can be susceptible to a lower self-image uh because Absolutely. we only play basketball and rap so if i'm not really in one of these bags i'm kind of done you know i'm just yeah. regular black you know and it's like well, what is that you know yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, 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 you're absolutely right. It's there. It's, you know, there's this narrative that, that we've been taught for years, decades, centuries, that everything um, of value about our country has been done by white people and that, you know, whatever we did, that's a nice, cute little story. Um, but we're still treated as guests, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like we're not really part of the part of the the, the 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 mainstream narrative. But once in a while, we'll dip into um, you know Martin Luther King or Malcolm X or Barack Obama. You know the the more popular figures. And you know when when I approached you about Truth First, when I was telling you about it, that was your premise of the show that that was that was the premise of, of that series it was to celebrate the forgotten the overlooked um african-american trailblazers and pioneers mm -hmm. and bill you know i you know the stories that we uncovered just still blow me away you know it was it was an eight-part series and um some of the true first that we that we celebrate in that series um had yeah. a significant role in American culture, you know, for right. a, a very quick example. So you okay, did. Hold on, hold on now. Yeah, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yeah. I don't want I'm to sorry. The beans because I think that the way we march through this, yeah, I'm be, sorry. rather than, than running the shopping list, let's, let's start with, <laughs> yeah, no, no, seriously, because I think that there's something exciting and I don't want to do the same thing by creating these as little footnotes. I want to actually frame each one of yeah. these as we get into it. Yeah. And that's why I reached out to you because I, you know, you guys, I mean, each one of the shows is what, what, 30 minutes or, or so devoted or an hour yeah. devoted to each of these eight figures. And, right. um, and, and that's very powerful. So, so let's start this by um, perhaps the description of what the, what the end, let's do it backwards. Let's, let's sort of look at the description of the accomplishments and then back mm. into the name of the individual. You, you see what I mean? Oh, okay. Okay. You know I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now you're not going to quiz me because, you know, and, and I know, I know you can relate to this bill when you do a project and you put your heart and soul into it, oh, it's, yeah. it, you're consumed and you're obsessed. And once you're done with that project, I don't know about you, brother, but I, I start deleting the files and I can't remember a lot of the nuances and the specifics, yeah. uh, but we'll get through it, my man. I, I don't, I, I, I was much better read on True First two years ago than I am today, <laughs> but uh, but we'll get through it. We'll get through well, it. And that's a very one, fascinating approach. I, I really like that. Yeah, well, well, the, well, the other part that, that you should feel comforted by is that I know even less than you about it. So, so, <laughs> I think you're still sitting in a good place. So, that sounds so, good. So I want you to just give us um, um, individual number one, and and no pun intended. All right. <laughs> so because individual number one is uh, our former president who needs to be talked to. Uh, <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, like for example, if I'm if I'm following this correctly, Bill, um, you can't get. Well, yeah, one individual, number one, was the first African-American to work for the U.S. Postal Service and was able to create that whole mantra of whether it's sleet or snow or rain, we will deliver, um, we will deliver your mail. And this was an African-American lady who lived in the, uh, the wild lady. west. Lady. Was a lady. Lady well, that's, who, that's who, huge. who tackled, tackled the toughest terrain imaginable was quite often one of the only African-American in the town or the settlement that she lived in. And mm -hmm. what was fascinating about her was that she, she lived on her own terms. She drank when she ran, went to, she carried a gun, she got in bar fights. 
she she was she lived on her own terms, and so that the lady that I'm descri- describing is actually what period? What, what year was this? What, this oh, was around, this was period? right after. Oh my gosh, this is right in the 1860s, uh, wow. if memory serves. Okay. And so uh, no, 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 no. Actually, a little bit later than that because there was a it, it was the 1890s because there was a Hollywood actor, um, Gary Cooper who knew her as his mail carrier. Wow, wow. Isn't that something? That is something. That's one that just kind of popped in my head. So so, uh, so that, the lady that I'm describing was uh, the pilot episode for the series. So, okay. Yeah. And that person, hold on, let me get my drum roll together. <laughs> <laughs> right. That person was. That person was and is stagecoach Mary, and and uh, she was portrayed by the very talented Kimberly Stevens in the episode, and uh, we were uh, we were very. Uh, that was a fun episode to work on. Very very hard work, uh, but that pilot was able to get us uh, the deal with uh, Urban Movie Channel, which is now All Black Network. Um, okay. So, uh, so not only a significant story and significant historian but her her story was rich enough that it enticed a network to to green light the uh, the remaining seven episodes so that episode and stage that was the true first that was a true first a true first <laughs> that's right i love it <laughs> all right that's right yeah yeah that's good okay I, and i got more man so okay you know. all right that i bring it because see i've i I, I just like printed out some stuff because I'm that quiz that you were talking about. I got you in this next one. I, I'm yeah. I'm going I'm going to hit you with some. Because, oh, you're going to quiz me? Okay, that's, that's yeah, good. yeah. So yeah. so it's um, so yeah. So okay, let's 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 get to our next figure, and I think we we'll probably be coming up on a break here in a minute. But yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go for it. So this particular gentleman um, uh, grew up under under duress. He. Uh, his, mo- his mother, who was African-American, unfortunately left him early in his childhood. His father, who was white, did not know what to do with a, a biracial child. And he took him to uh, a priest and, and had him leave, live with this priest and abandoned in him. And this young African-American man, I think, made it to maybe fourth, fifth or sixth grade, mm-hmm. ended up uh, leaving uh, the priest's house and was just this amazing mind where he, he was just this natural inventor and would do these inventive things wherever he wherever he uh, laid his hat, you know, wherever he was staying at the time. Right. One cool invention was that he was living in Minnesota where the, the winters are treacherous and he created a snowmobile so that he could drive doctors around so that they could make their own house calls. And uh, this man went on to invent um, the first refrigerated trucking system. And that company that created that trucking system, those fleet of trucks, still exists today. So so that's a brother hopefully you're somewhat familiar with. uh, Uh, Because that's that's the man you portrayed as uh, Frederick McKinley Jones. Um, And he, you know, an amazing man an amazing mind with very limited education, but was responsible, what, 60 plus patents and inventions that this brother made. I mean, just imagine that, the conditions that he was in, homeless, without an education, had to live by his wits for years, and ended up being a very successful businessman, and that business still exists to this day. Just blows me away, man blows me yeah away. yeah yeah that's amazing well you know the other little tidbit on frederick mckinley jones that, yes, that you omitted that i thought was also yeah. fascinating Wait, oh there's a lot yeah i omitted yeah, a was, lot was, yeah. was that business of him merging sound with the with yes. the film the when, when movies became talkies and whatnot right. being able to bring and how do you put the sound to this thing that was once silent and yeah. so i just found that to be pretty incredible also you know yeah. he had yeah. um, so no, it was an honor to play him and to learn about him because I had never heard of him before. <laughs> when you said, I want you to play Frederick McKinley, he's like, man, John Doe. I, yeah, I got to Google this one. You know what's unfortunate about that particular episode? I know we're up against it. We had, that was the one episode I didn't have one eyewitness, one author, one scholar. So few people know about this man. Wow. That one was really hard for us to get that incisive, insightful testimonial about him 
Yeah. Um, he didn't really have family members that were could speak on his behalf. There was a lady who wrote a book about him, I think in the 70s or 80s, but she has since passed. There was, uh-huh. there was no one who had eyewitness or learned information about this great man. And that that was a that was a challenge for the episode. It was but 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 again justifies the creation of that episode because so few people know about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you you guys, we have it going on here today during our Black History Month series with Gerald Harkness as we talk about Blacks that that were true first in American history. And so we're glad that you're with us today and we hope you'll stay with us after this break that's coming up right now. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives. From our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back, and we're glad that you're with us today as we discuss and chop it up on Blacks who are true first in American history with my friend, Gerald Harkness. And uh, so... We are going through right now, Gerald is, is uh, educating us on some <laughs> of the uh, very colorful characters that he featured in his television series, documentary series, uh, entitled True First. So, Gerald, next. Well, um, this, one, this one I felt um, everyone would know about. And when this particular episode aired, um, I saw on my Facebook feed so many people who said, oh, my gosh, I had no idea she did this. Wow. And I've, I consider this lady one of the greatest orators of the 21st century. Uh, in her particular episode, we give her we, we highlight countless quotes from her um, that are still very meaningful and had significant meaning in the 2020 election. Um, because this lady was the first African-American woman to want, run for president of the United States in, uh, in 1972. Now, I know you know who that is, but Bill, I was tripping when, I would, when that episode aired and I saw so many people say, I have no idea a Black woman ran for president. I was like, man, are we that um, uh, negligent in teaching history in its totality? She should be 
a household name. And I know there's other, there's movies that are gonna be coming out about her, uh, but this uh, particular episode was directed by the lady who played Stagecoach Mary. It was her television debut, Kim Stevens, who did a fantastic job with the episode. And this is of course the one and only Shirley Chisholm, but people just, didn't know her story. Can you believe that, man? I mean, it's just like, yeah, yeah. It, that it blew me not... away. Yeah, yeah. That blew me away. And of course, you know, a lot of people, I think, recognize it with Vice President Kamala Harris. You know, a lot of people thinking that she was in the true first, but actually it was, uh, it was Shirley Chisholm, um, who still garners so much respect for just the trailblazing that she did and, and the type of governing that she did. Um, that unfortunately kind of um, got eclipsed with, with the conservative movement of Reagan in the early 1980s, but she was always one um, fighting for the underdog, fighting for the, uh, for the less privileged. And uh, boy, if there's a true first, it was, it was definitely. Now, hard. do you recall uh, what year that presidential run was? I'm going to take a stab and say like 72. It was 72. Something. Yeah. Cause she okay. had just gotten elected to Congress in 68, I believe. Mm -hmm. so yeah, she I was still right. rel yeah. She was still relatively new, but yeah, she ran in, in, uh, in 72. Um, um, didn't quite make it. Right. But, uh, but um, um, and of course that was, that was, uh, that was um, Nixon's re-election. So he was he was on a ramp. That was before Watergate, before right, people knew what right. kind of cat he was. Yeah, <laughs> so was Democrats were fighting Watergate an uphill battle Watergate. that year. Right. The right, election right. That, that Watergate occurred. And um, yeah, that's that's amazing, man. Um, yeah. 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 So she is uh yeah, Shirley Chisholm. I re you know, these are experiences, it's very interesting because when we say well, but you said two words. You said Richard Nixon, and then you said, you know, uh, Shirley Chisholm in 1972. Man, my memory of that uh, as a small child was sitting on the floor at my grandparents' house because I come from a very Republican family. Well, and okay. so uh -huh. My grandfather was, you know, tried to defend Nixon every <laughs> night, man, as he, you know, debated with my grandmother about it. And I'm sitting on the floor listening to him because all this is, you know, that's sort of grown folks talk. I'm sitting right. here just, you know, trying to eat my ice cream cone or something. And, <laughs> but I remember those experiences. I remember when Shirley Chisholm was running as a child, sitting on that same floor in their den, mm. watching the television, Yeah. Um, you know, after all in the family or something, you know what I mean? Which was another part of that time. Yeah. <laughs> all but, stuff, you know. But how cool is that? How disruptive is that to have a woman of color featured in the nightly news or having news packages done about her for running for president of the United States. Oh, I mean, sometimes the significance <laughs> of just running and, and, and having, and you being able to look at the TV and like, wow, she's running for president. That's possible. That's mm -hmm. doable. That's achievable. Yeah. That's, um, you know, it's just incredibly important. You talked earlier about the psyche. Brother, you're so right. And to and to have heroes and and people who step out and 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 put themselves in danger, man. This is four yeah. years removed from all kinds of assassinations going on. And um, um, you know, that said, she was uh, that was a, that was a great episode. And and I'm pretty sure I think there's even one or two feature films in development or in production. Um, about Shirley Chisholm, and, and, and rightfully so. She's someone that everyone needs to to learn more about, my, in my humble opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I agree. Um, because, you know, again, I, all I know is the result piece that she ran, but yeah. know very little about the, you know, the, the life that, that made this woman. You know what I mean? And that, yeah. that's what we need to know, because... Yeah, it's good, you know. Yeah, Kim touches on it. Each episode's only 30 minutes, so you're, so you're very limited. But what was beautiful was that as a young child, she would, she would demand to be listened to when she would play with kids and felt like kids were overlooking her or ignoring her. Um, she would demand to be listened to, and she carried that drive and intent her entire life. And so, um, you know, she was very much for African American rights, but she was equally significant for women's rights as well. So sure. significant, significant woman, man. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. 
Yeah. Okay, so 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 you 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 hitting it hard. So let, let's let's keep let's keep it going. All right. So this one, this one, and I, I'm talking Gerald, about this is the Gerald Harkness show, everybody. This is the <laughs> no, show. this is your show, yeah. brother. <laughs> this is your show, brother. So all right. So this one, this one's pretty interesting. I, I I've got a few tidbits. I can only remember so much off the top of my head, but you've heard of the Lone Ranger. Yeah, you've heard of the Lone Ranger, the the comic book and the television show. So folklore has it that the Lone Ranger was based on this particular brother. And this brother was, I believe, the first US Marshal west of the Mississippi. So he was one of the first African-American men to try to um, bring about peace between Native Americans, and the new settlers, because there was a lot of outlaw and a lot of stuff going around. And this particular brother had um, lived with Native Americans, could speak the language. And, um, and then late in life, he became uh, involved with law enforcement. Now I'm gonna get the number wrong. I apologize, I should have fact checked it, but he was responsible for hundreds of arrests in his short tenure. Um, he was he was known as one of the most effective um, uh, law enforcement uh, men in in the Wild West. Mm -hmm. um, one of those, including his son, his son had gotten in a scuffle and the brother had to go out and uh, <laughs> bring his own son in. I mean, you know, the law was a law to this man. And so if anyone watched the series Watchmen with uh, Regina King, um, this man is featured in that series and huh. his name is Bass Reeves. And uh, so Bass Reeves was a real man. He's a real uh, law enforcement man. Um, that particular episode was directed by Courtney Jones. Memory serves, Courtney directed it mostly with his iPhone. He had some sort of amorphic lens that he put on his iPhone. And oh, wow. the, the, uh, the aesthetics of that particular episode are fantastic. So, um, so I wasn't as involved with the research um, or the scripting of it, but uh, but that was one I just enjoyed watching. You know what I mean? I was like, oh wow, this is this is a cool episode about this law enforcement man who a lot of people say there was a lot of similarities between the Lone Ranger and stuff that Bass Reeves did. And uh, if you watch the episode, you can see a lot of the different similarities between the comic, the folk, the the fictional character, and the real character. So do you have a tanto with him or anything like that? Little he did have Native Americans uh, assisting him trackers. and the Native American trackers. Yeah, wow. he did. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. Wow. And there was that thing, I think, did he leave a silver dollar when he left, when he did an arrest? Something that the Lone Ranger did was something that Bass Reeves actually did, too. I, I, I don't remember the specifics. I apologize to your was audience. A silver dollar or silver, was it one of his silver? Silver bullets? dollar, silver bullet was something that yeah. he left behind as kind of like his calling card. So you, you, you know, watch the episode and be the judge. There's a no, lot of man, similarities that's there. Stuff. That's good stuff. You know, so yeah. I'm just trying to, you know, of course be crass and, you know, I need to be careful with it, but, but <laughs> you know, I'm just like thinking, you know, who was that masked man? Who was that black man? I mean, you know, what, I mean, did he, so was there anything to the mask issue? Cause I mean, that's interesting too. Uh, the, I mean, Not that I recall, but that's a great point. But maybe that's interesting, the whole mask man and black man, that you might, you actually might be on to something there. Well, it's a really, black mask. Yeah, yeah. I wonder like, if I people mean, saw him. Black mask? I mean, right. did he wore, I mean, I'm just curious, man. I mean. Yeah, he, yeah. I, you know, in the Watchmen episode, he does have on a black mask. Um, okay. But okay. I, I, I don't remember any corroborating evidence that he actually did. But um but it was, he was a bad A, man. I mean, he was, whenever, you know, if you did wrong, he would track you down. He would figure out a way to bring you in and bring you to justice. And wow. so uh, a really, a really fascinating story. So yeah, yeah, yeah. man, that's, that's good stuff. You see, yeah. see, I, I knew I was going to be all right when I called Gerald about uh, it. I was panicked too. I was like, true first. I got to remember some of this stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Who did that? Know. I did. Yeah. Who oh, did I do that? Really? Yeah. <laughs> no man well i'm glad i'm glad that you're here and again this is all very very good stuff because um you know we haven't even talked about any of this so this is good for me to 
you know, learn something. And for well, I'll, I'll leave you one more if we have time. Um, well, I, we, we we're going to take a break here, real yeah, quick. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, just hold on to hold on to that one. I will, and uh, and we will come back and visit more of blacks who made uh, who black Americans who were indeed true first trailblazers and legends of their own time and should be a part of the daily dose of American history. And they are, as long as we keep telling the stories, but we just need it to kind of come together so we don't have to celebrate Came into that. one month a year. Uh, these wonderful accomplishments that uh, can't even be adequately covered in a month out of the year, yeah. quite frankly. So, so true. yeah, so, um, but we appreciate you being here during this series and we will be back in just a minute. You're watching and listening to Bill Myers inspires on the inspired choices network and i'm here today with my guest mr gerald harkness we'll be right back today we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives from our health to political unrest the environment financial uncertainty and the nation's racial divide tune in every friday at 3 p.m eastern standard time for bill myers inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We're back. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires, and I'm here with my guest today, filmmaker, producer, Gerald Harkness. Hey, you know, man, I love the, the spot in the breaks because it paints you. I, I produce a director, brother. You do everything. So let me just take a moment to celebrate you as the true Renaissance man of Indianapolis because, you know, I've known about you long before you heard about my little crazies stuff that I'm doing. So it's an honor to be here, man. So oh, thank, man, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's Absolutely. awful kind of you. Um, okay. So you got more stuff. You got more stuff. So you I do, man. I do. I was trying to save this one for near the last, near the end, because you, you know, being the Renaissance man, you, you're a musician. And this lady was, this one I found out about, it was actually an article. I want to say my wife sent it to me. And when I read this article about this amazing lady, I was blown away. She's truly the queen of rock and roll. She, she, she started out in the gospel world as most or as a lot of um, African-American musicians did. She could both sing and play the guitar, but she also had this urge to play secular music. She had this urge to rock out. And so she um, had this dual life where she would, would perform in churches, but she would also perform in nightclubs. And over the course of her career, when she got a recording contract and, and created this her own style, her style really influenced the likes of Chuck Berry, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, um, Elvis Presley, um, Little Richard. Um, and to the point, I, in, in the opening clip, I believe, I should know, I directed this particular episode, we have her performing one of her hits in England, in London, I think, somewhere in England. And in the crowd was Keith Richards wanting to learn how to play the guitar. So he was watching this black woman rock it out. And her name is Sister Rosetta Tharp. An amazing story. 
Um, and I remember on that particular episode, you had found some relatives of hers. Unfortunately, we had wrapped the interview portion of the documentary. But again, that was another one where uh, we, we, we had a great author who wrote a book about Sister Rosetta Tharp, but there were so few people who knew about her who could speak about her from a scholastic or eyewitness perspective. Mm -hmm. But if you look at her career, man, it's absolutely amazing. Sister Rosetta Tharp, you know. Rosetta uh, Tharp. Totally a trailblazer, a true first in that. She was one of the first creators of rock and roll. It's so hard to say who created this, who created that, but she was definitely a pioneer in that musical genre and influenced a lot of people. Uh, well, you know, way. well, you know, while we're on the rock and roll thing and, and discussing Sister Rosetta Tharp, which is an incredible story, uh, that that really is an incredible story. But I do want to to take a minute and pay our proper respects to the genre of rock and roll, uh, because there are so, so, so many mm. Uh, folk that were contributors and creators of the original rock and roll. And uh, the vast majority of them were Black people. And I, yeah. and I want to point that out because now when we think about, we've gotten rid of the role, so we just call it rock. But when we look at these genres today, uh, it's, it's hard to find a, a Black artist who is involved in, uh, you know, in, in rock and roll. Um, yet even still, just to kind of prove my point, uh, if I was to ask you who was the greatest rock guitar player of all time, and you say Jimi Hendrix, yeah, you know, uh, this is the role model for, you know, going out, going Absolutely. out there with Jimi Hendrix. And they, the flip side of that was Chuck Berry. Yeah. So, so yeah. yet and still for us to be able to identify when uh, very easily these as giants within that genre, but we, but the disconnect, I, it, no, I, I, you know what I mean? Cause if you look totally. at that, then how in the world could you realize that there would be a disconnect because we'd have to, in order to honor rock and roll, we, we, you mentioned, Little Richard, but we'd have to also be talking about Fats Domino. Yeah, we'd also have to be uh, talking about some of those doo-wop groups. Yeah, that you know uh, that were considered early rock and roll. A uh, uh, Little Anthony and the Imperials. Absolutely. I mean, it's a whole and you and most of those names we don't recognize right because on. we've sort of buried them in this narrative of rock and roll is just you know, the Eagles and the Doobie Brothers or something, you know, and, and it's like, oh, ask them what they listened to. Ask them yeah. what they were, ask Keith Richards who he was digging on, and you wind up looking at a whole lot of Black people. We, I mean, we, we, and, and Absolutely. I mean, you know better than I, but, but, but African Americans have always set the path for American popular music. We have always been the influencer, the, the, the influencers and the innovators, um, going back to minstrel shows, going mm -hmm. back to rock and roll, going back to country music, of course, jazz, of course, R&B and soul, um, you know, hip hop, my goodness. So we've always been um, on the cutting edge and the trailblazers for American popular music but early in the 40s, when they were trying to figure out well, how do we make money off these black people, let's call it race music. You know, let's call it something where right. black people like black people music and white people buy. But we, we, we but we've always been that way. And you know, Bill, you you know way better than I, but it's it is interesting when you think rock and roll, when you think country, you think of white people, but we were at the forefront for all of that. So, um, yeah, that's yeah, it's very, very interesting. And, you know, because yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it uh, for, for me, that really comes down to the concentration and where things became the innovation sparks and stuff like that flew around the blues and jazz. Yeah. Uh, where suddenly it was stretched out, uh, it was pushed to the limits, um, <laughs> and <clears throat> new ideas were formulating. And these things, uh, took off not only in black culture, but took off in white culture. Again, uh, you know, we talk about jazz last week. We had a very fascinating conversation with um, um, 
Kadifa Wong, who is a filmmaker, mm -hmm. and uh, she did a film called Uprooted. Mm -hmm. And the idea of Uprooted was a documentary about jazz dance. Oh, cool. And how jazz dance has taken on all these forms that have been sort of uh, appropriated by white choreographers and white dance studios yet the disconnect and the uprooted part is that they don't know where that stuff came from it did not come from a eurocentric dance uh right. format as in ballet being the basis no it came from african tribal stuff being the right. basis and so you know yeah. again it's the same thing of how it is no it is and you know that's where i'm i'm not i'm gonna stumble and trying to articulate this, but we're not the other when it comes to American culture and history. We're yeah. the it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're yeah. not the side note. We're not, we're not just some footnote. We right. are the it. We are the creators of. And yeah. that's why the narrative of America of America is gonna, I think is gonna go through a very fascinating shift over the next 30, 40 years, especially as we go through these demographic changes and that black culture, black contributions will become more mainstream. Yeah, I just yeah. think it's inevitable, man. Sure it so, is, sure it um, is. And, and, and in, my, in, the, in the chat room, I, I, I see a, a note up there that, that Jennifer contributed. And so I want to, to uh, pay the proper respects to that. And it was very recently that we had uh, crossover the other way, I guess you would say, as far as a very renowned Black recording artist, Charlie Pride, who was in the country music and, and kind of stood alone, I mean, for, for many, many years as a giant yeah. in the country music field. And so um, uh, I want to take a moment to pay our respects, not just to the rock and roll and the jazzers, but to pay our respects to Charlie Pride and his wonderful contribution in country music and so Absolutely. Uh, thank you for that jennifer because that that's um yeah amen to that lost. she's absolutely that, right yeah she's that could be lost right. in so many ways so yeah. yeah charlie pride was great and i did appreciate charlie pride and listen you know my household played all that all char country music was what i was do every morning getting ready for school and it wasn't because of my mom the caucasian part she liked aretha franklin it was my dad the African really and who was Conway Twitty and me and Dottie Weston me out the door, man. Was I mean, he really? Yeah. But your dad's a jazz musician though. So that's, that's but he got influence from country? Dude, country music, country wow. music. I mean, I can sit up here and talk about Mel Tillis and, <laughs> and, and I used to dig Charlie Pride. Yeah. You know, when we get behind closed doors and she lets her hair hang down and she lets yeah. me know that I'm a man. <laughs> right. No one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Charlie oh. Pride was one of the most soulful. Mm. If you listen to him, he's just like uh, the gentleman, I can never think of his name, who was the lead singer of, um, uh, who was the lead singer of, uh, oh God, Blood, Sweat and Tears. Ooh. When oh, you God. listen to those voices, man, mm -hmm. soul is not exclusive to black people. I, let me be the first to say it. it you're absolutely right. There's some soulful white folks. And, and when it comes out, absolutely. And, and, and the country music field today actually is, uh, has so much influence from the hip hop industry yeah. that, you know, it's, you know, instead of the whining and the twang that used to be uh, country music, now it's, you got white art, David Clayton Thomas. Thank you. Absolutely. David Clayton Thomas was soulful, as soulful gotcha. as Ray Charles, as soulful as, right. and, and, and so, uh, you know, but these cats, man, and even in the country music, contemporary country, man, are riffing all over the place. Stuff that only black folks did at church. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, Bill, I mean, and that's where you want to get, man. I mean, that's where, you know, we're creative. We are creative people and we, yeah. we draw inspiration. You know, I'm not going to be like, well, that guy's a white Republican. Can I draw inspiration from him? Of course I can. We draw inspiration from each other. Yeah. But it's just that we've, for a lot of economic and socioeconomic and cultural and just flat out racial reasons, exactly, we're we're put in these we're put in these categories, and so you know even in you know I know we're talking about true first, but I've done documentaries on white people, Andy Gibb, Al Unser, Damon Bailey, and I feel a connection to those narratives might may might not be as deep as I did doing true first, 
but I still want to tell all kinds of stories, stories that interest me. Um, yeah, and, uh, and as an artist, I know you can relate to that because you don't want to, you don't want to be confined. You don't want the, you don't want the money oh, people no. to just say, Bill, you can only play this type of music. No. Bill, you can only use these type of movies. You can only do these type of plays. No. Uh, so it's always that battle. You know what I mean? Yeah, one of my favorite movies is Terms of Endearment. Okay, I said it out loud. Terms of Endearment. <laughs> great Charlie movie. McLean, Deborah Winger. Yeah. Um, still great movie. In the gut. It's a great movie. The score is beautiful. I think it, it was is. Grand, man. It was awesome. It is. So, when she's so, in the hospital and yelling, you know, give my daughter oh, the shot. Oh, oh, but here, oh, see, now you, now we're going to take it all the way to it a single moment, which is why it's the greatest film for me. And it was when the when the youngest son is standing by the bedside oh, and yes. the oldest son showing out and that young son he's like you know he's just so tore up man that rips my how can you not cry out. on that part i totally remember that yeah that yeah. that scene right there i almost had you know i've seen the movie a million times and it's almost like i want to look away because it's just so emotional it's so real right right and yeah. and that's that's part of this. I mean, it's, you know, our stories are universal too. Yes, we can relate to a terms of endearment. That's such a, such a classic, fantastic, iconic movie. James L. Brooks, Shirley MacLaine, oh, Deborah yeah. Winger, Jack Nicholson. I mean, it's, it's, it's an all time great, but conversely, we have those types of stories. We have those types sure. of experiences. And I think that's what guys like you and I fight for is that, um, you know, what we what we do is mainstream as well. So, sure. Um, yeah. So I love, you know, again, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not inspired. I'm inspired by the struggle, the story of individuals. And we all we all have that story. We all have wins and losses. We yes. all. And, and so it's about our resilience. It's about uh, how, how we overcome these things. That's what gets me, you know, Bill Myers inspires. It's not about me being so inspirational as much as it is me sharing the stories of those things that inspire me. And, and right. if I can grab those things that catch my attention and perhaps share them, maybe they will inspire you also. But the right. reason I grab them is because they resonate with me. <laughs> they move Absolutely, me. Absolutely, man. And I want yeah. to share that experience yeah. with others. And so that's, yeah, that, that's really huge. So I'm going to flip the script on you now because I've got a few things that I want yeah. to, to- You're going to quiz me. Yeah, I'm about to go O oh, for whatever, but okay. Oh, no, it's all right. It's all right. So, <clears throat> and let me see here because I just- kind of pulled this stuff out before <laughs> we, we went live. Well, I had sort of skimmed it in my head, but I just thought it's so fascinating. And so I'm going to focus primarily in arts, media, music, TV things, because once we get off that, I, I don't even know anything about, you know, first hockey player. It's like, I, I don't know. And no offense to my people in Canada, hockey is a beautiful thing. Right. <laughs> so, right. um, but I just can't speak to it. Um, so uh, so our category is African American first in music and dance. So, Woo! yeah, see, this gets it gets deep really, really quick. So, the um, the first African American who was member of the New York City Opera Company. Do you have any idea who that might be? She's a singer. It's a he. That's a there's a company. oh. Opera Company, the New York City Opera, uh huh, Opera Company. Um, so so he sang opera. That's my my last yeah. clue. Yes, Paul Robeson. Oh, nope. But I will tell you, it was Todd Duncan. No, oh my gosh, never heard of him. Wow, oh, really? No, okay, I haven't. Well, let me give you your edu Let me give you your Black History lesson. No, please do. So yeah, I don't know. Todd Duncan. The 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 major thing to know about Todd Duncan is Todd Duncan was, I, I'm, I'm pretty doggone certain I'm correct here. He was the first Porgy in Porgy and Bess. Wow. What year was, what year was that? Was that like before 1900s or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 not before 1900s. We're in 1945 when he oh, was wow. of the opera company. Okay. And, um, but yeah, Todd Duncan. Wow. Uh, Todd Duncan was also in a um, 
another played the lead in another amazing musical i believe that was composed by kurt vile and it was called lost in the stars and that Ooh. that song alone i would say make a footnote go on to youtube and play the song lost in the stars lost it, in the stars okay yeah, it, it it's a crushing tune uh wow it's so beautiful so todd duncan okay thank todd you duncan okay so uh who was the first fee first person uh member african-american of the metropolitan opera company and this is a female and i bet you can get close to this one marion anderson marion anderson it is wow Indeed. 1955 who was the first male african-american to win a grammy award now this oh. one kind of caught me my gut is to say brother nat king cole but uh let me think if there's anyone before him uh i'm gonna go with nat king cole okay nope the the first the first <laughs> male Grammy Award African American male Grammy Award winner was Count Basie in 1958. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Good. who was the first oh, nice. woman to win a Grammy Award? That I, um, I'm gonna say Etta James. Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald. And because it was the same year, I'm not too sure that it wasn't Ella Fitzgerald probably singing with the Count Basie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what it sounds These are like. great, though, man. I'll, this is great. I'm loving this. This is fun. So, so yeah. So, so, um, and you know, our first, uh, the first Oscar winner, uh, Hattie McDaniel, woman, Sydney oh. Poitier, male. There, there you go. There you go. Okay, but I got one for you. Who was the first nominee? for leading actress for the Academy Awards? Uh, I want to say Diane Carroll. Dorothy Dandridge. Dorothy Dandridge. How did I miss her? The most beautiful Jones. woman like of all time. Of all time. Oh. Man, look. Man, oh. if I could high five you till your hands fell off, I would do it. Because I believe the same thing. Dorothy Dandridge oh. has to be like, you know, the word beauty, see Dorothy Dandridge. She absolutely. was absolutely wow. and a talent. Oh, and a man. talent. Sing, act, I mean everything. Yeah. And, and so, you know, Dorothy Dandridge is, and, and of course, you know, our Lena Horn. Lena Horn was, you know, oh, beautiful woman. Talent. Dorothy, Dorothy Dandridge took the, the whole yeah, the whole yeah. shot she, on that one, man. She was amazing. Um, so okay, so who was our who was the first black network television host? First black uh, network television host, like nationally or uh -huh. like her own, like their own show or like a news anchor? Well, like their own show. You actually said them earlier, but I'll just give you. I said, oh, it was Nat King Cole. He Nat had five King minutes. Cole it was. He it had five was. minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, they, you know, there's that video on YouTube because Nat King Cole was, was darker complexion where they lighten his skin. They like raise the iris up. It's absolutely appalling, but it's that's the yeah. way they thought. They felt like his dark skin would be a fun, offensive to sponsors and and you know and so and yeah, you you are absolutely correct. And I want to just add a little note that you know little Billy Preston, yeah, and uh, was all, always on the Nat King Cole show doing duets with him when he was a child. Was he? Man. Oh, I gotta Google that. Oh, I yeah, didn't know that. Out. I'll send you some clips on that, man. It's oh, phenomenal. that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. yeah. So that's great I mean, stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's very interesting. That I mean, goes on and on, doesn't it? It does go on and on because there are a lot of firsts. There are yes. a lot of folks, and uh, and so I just challenge everyone to take a moment and maybe just type in your Google search bar. You know, blacks who were the first at right. anything, and just go search because it is it's at least interesting because I'm yeah. still get excited about it as we're sitting here talking about it. It's it's, just it's so fascinating. And it's so significant. America wouldn't be where it would be today with all these innovations in science and medicine and right. innovation, um, media, music, all that stuff. We just would not be the same country without these contributions. Absolutely. And there you have it. Gerald Harkness said it here last, folks. Thank you for tuning in. You've been listening to Bill Myers Inspires. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you for spending your afternoon right here with us at Bill Myers Inspires. 
Remember, we're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Choices Network. Remember to take time this week to take a breath and look within yourself and figure out how you can make a positive difference in this world. Spread the word, and we'll see you here next Friday. Have a wonderful week.